Hello everyone, welcome back to this object oriented programming with Python series and in this video we are going to get deeper inside our classes and we will understand that what is the function of constructor and what role does self plays inside our objects. We will also discuss that uh, how our objects take space in our uh, heap memory of the computer and we will also discuss that what is the ultimate thing that defines the size of our class. So without further ado, let's just dive into this video. So before we get to any of uh, the things that I said earlier, uh, what we have to understand is that how our init function actually works. Uh, we discussed it in the previous video and we uh, wrote a simple uh, init function inside of a class and uh, we use that function uh, in order to uh, process our other method inside of a class, right? But there's something that we have to discuss about init itself. So for that, uh, what I can do is I can simply write a simple class and I can name it as computer. And inside of this class, I can write my init function. And I'll just simply go ahead and remove this. And I can write another method and we can call it a test method. And I will again give it self, and here I will write print. This is second method, right? And what uh, and what can I do is uh, I can simply go outside and I will create an object named as C1, and I will call my uh, object here. So right now we have created uh, our object, we have created a class and inside of our class we have created an init method and then we have created a test method right here. But what we, uh, but the thing that we have to discuss here is init method, right? So, uh, I mean, we all know that whatever we write in this function, it, it gets used uh, in other methods inside of a class, right? So whenever we uh, call a class, this method automatically gets processed. What I mean to uh, say is I can simply go ahead and I can write print. This is my first class. Uh, I can simply remove this space and I can save this file and I can run my program again. .py. And here you can see uh, when I uh, ran my constructor.py, and I just created an object. You can see this line has been printed out. This is my first class. So you can see uh, I didn't call any method. I didn't ask this class to do anything. So I simply called my uh, object of this class here. So when I called my object, uh, this method has been uh, processed automatically. And because in this method we had this print function, that is why this line has been printed out right so if i can just go ahead and i can write c1 dot and i can call my test method here and i will save my program and i can write python constructor again and here you can see the very first thing that has been processed is init method itself so the first line this is my first class has been printed out and after that what we call our second method this is a second method that has been printed out so that means whenever we call our class, this init method gets processed automatically, right? So this, uh, in other words, this function runs automatically. But the question is why this init method gets processed automatically? I mean, what is the need of this? So obviously uh, this method contains a couple of different variables, right? So let's say, uh, let's just say, uh, I mean, I had a variable here. Uh, I will not write the actual variables. I will just use a pseudocode. Uh, for example, I will use a RAM here. Let's say it's a 30 and I can say a disk here. Uh, it is a, let's say 512. Now, if I want to, I mean, in this second test method, uh, I can, I want to print out those variables so I can say uh, the, uh, this is the property of my laptop right and here I can write RAM and disk so whatever that has been stored in these variables will be printed out here don't worry about these uh, errors here because we didn't use self that is why it's showing error but right now we're just talking about the concept that why 
this init method gets processed automatically so let's let's just say we we call this test function from this object and uh, suppose this method doesn't uh, gets processed itself that means we will not have any values inside of these variables and if that's so that means we will not have any values to print here and in that case our test method will give us error right so to uh, prevent that error everything that has been present in our init method is processed automatically because in the later stages all of those things that are written inside this uh, init method will be processed or will be used inside other methods of the class so that is the ultimate reason that why init methods is actually processed automatically whenever we call the object of the class okay with that being said now we will move forward with uh, our uh, today's topic of the video uh, which is uh, let's just talk about the heap memory first so whenever we call our function or whenever we uh, create an object of a class this object uh, occupies some space inside the heap memory of a computer and let's just say we want to see that uh, what is the location of that uh, object so i can just simply go ahead and remove all of this and for the time being i can write pass here all right so uh, for now uh, this is a simple class it has nothing inside it just this pass keyword and i can simply go ahead and remove this and here i have created the object of this class right so i will click uh, i will clear this prompt and what will i do uh, i will use id function to uh, to see the location of uh, this object inside of the heap memory of my laptop so i can write print id c1 so this id function will actually give us uh, the location of, in the heap memory so i can simply go ahead and and here you can see this c1 object is saved at this place inside the heap memory of my computer so simply if i just go ahead and create another uh, object and i print the id of that object then you can see both of these objects have been saved in different location that means these two objects are two different things right so if i just go ahead and i simply uh, write let's say uh, init method okay okay let's say uh, inside it i will write self dot uh, disk same variables that we used earlier 30 and self dot ram is equal to 512 okay for the time being uh, just uh, don't worry about this self i will explain that why I, i'm using this self here or what is the need of self inside of a class or inside the methods of a class right uh, i mean what role does it play and why it is so necessary that without it our class or objects will uh, give us errors right uh, so uh, don't worry about it uh, let's just go with the flow right now okay so uh, i just used these two variables and what i can do is i can create another uh, method and i can call it let's say present right to present uh, the characteristics of my laptop and i will again give self to it let's just say i will uh, write inside the body of this method print the properties of my laptops my laptop are and here i can write self dot ram and self dot uh, disk okay so if i just go ahead and if i will write uh, c1 dot and inside of this object i will call present and c2 and i will again call present and if i just go ahead and save this file and clear this prompt uh, oops and run this program oops this is embarrassing okay we have uh, this little error here 
we made a little spelling mistake again clearing the prompt and run this program here you can see uh, the value or the output of both of these objects is exactly the same the property of my laptop are uh, 5 12 and 30 but we know if i'll just go ahead and again print the ids of these two uh, objects we will realize that even though the output of uh, these objects is uh, same the location of these two objects is actually different right that means the, these two are different uh, objects but right now because we uh, gave same values to both of these objects that's why it, they are yielding in uh, same output right uh, but let's say uh, i want to change the value of my first object so i can write i can simply write c1 dot uh disk because i want to change the value of this disk let's say i i am giving the value of disk is 120 and i am giving the value of ram uh, as let's say 1000 so if I, I will save this program now and if i will run this program here you can see the values of c1 object has been uh, changed or updated so now you can see that these two objects are actually two different things uh, that will be used to perform two different tasks, right? So uh, now let's just move ahead and see that what is the role of uh, this self. Okay, so all of this, uh, I mean, that uh, these values have been stored inside of our, this init method. And this init method is actually what we call as constructor. Okay, uh, sorry constructor right so that means i mean you can uh, say it in these words that the building blocks of entire class will be defined in this sec in this section and that is why this section is called constructor because it will construct all of things that are uh, yet to come in other methods uh, of our computer class right so this is called constructor but what is self i mean why are we actually using self right so i'll just simply go ahead and i will let's say remove this okay so uh, what i want is i want to call my uh, this present method so i can call my computer class and from this class i can call uh, present and what i can say now the, uh, i will give the value of the object that i want to work on right so i will let's say i want to work on c1 so i will give c1 this so this C1 will be saved inside this self argument, right? So uh, after that, uh, I mean, we feed this C1 to this self, uh, C1 is saved in it. That means it will become C1.disk and it will become C1.ram. And that C1 will also be transported to this self as well, right? And uh, because of that, uh, we had I mean, for example, uh, it, it became c1.disk and it became c1.ram. So uh, similarly, it will become c1.ram and it, and it will become c1.disk, right? So basically, uh, this self keyword is actually used to point towards the object that we are going to work on, right? I mean, whatever object that we are going to use, that will be sol uh, solved or that means whatever object that we are going to work on uh, will be uh, stored inside of this self keyword and that keyword will be used in all the methods inside our class right so this self is actually defines that okay uh, i mean this function is identical to every object but this self tells this method that you have to work on that certain object right and we can simply just go ahead and write this into a new notation and uh, we can call that c1 present this now this means exactly same as this right it means that we are calling our class and we are uh, calling our present method inside of that class and after that we are feeding that method this object c1 and we are asking our class to work on this object right so if i'll just go ahead and if i will write use c2 dot present i can save this program and i will comment this line here 
and here you can see that the value of a C1 object and C2 object has been printed out. So just to summarize that this init method is a constructor that will hold all the building blocks that are going to use in all the other methods inside our computer class or any other class that we will create. And when it comes to self, self is a keyword that actually points towards the object that we are going to use inside our object or inside our class, right? So whatever object that we will work on, it will be stored in this self. And because it will be stored in this self, then all these variables will refer to that object and all these variables will be uh, related to that certain object C1. Now, what if we want to uh, compare two different objects? Uh, what we will do and, or how can we do it? For that, we can simply just go ahead and write another method. Let's just call it compare. Now, because we want to compare two different objects, so uh, the first one is going to be stored in self, obviously, and the second one uh, is will be stored in another uh, argument. We can name it as second object. Okay, so let's say I want to uh, compare these C1 and C2 uh, based on the value of this disk, right? So I can simply write if self dot disk is equal to second object dot disk because uh, c1 will be stored in self and c2 with whom we want to compare our c1 will be stored in second object right so we are simply saying if c1 dot disk is equal to c2 dot disk then return true else return false okay so if uh, this function will return true then what will happen is uh, we can simply uh, write another statement here we can say if c1 dot present c2 if this exists in other words if this is true then just simply print they have same values else just print they have different values i'll just go ahead and save this file and I will simply exit this. Okay, clear. CD desktop. Uh, let's just go to the folder where all of this has been saved. Okay, and here we'll simply write a command to run this program. Constructor dot py. Okay, we have some error. Oh, sorry, uh, because we want to compare, uh, we had to use compare method. So we are simply just calling present method again. Here we will write compare method. I will save this file and I will run this program again. So here you can see it's saying that they have two different values because in C1 we have disk 120 and because we didn't change the value for C2, then C2 has the value of disk as 30. Let's just say I will remove uh, these two lines. That means C1 has a value of disk as 30 and C2 also has a value of disk as 30. I will save this program. I will clear my prompt and run this program again. And here you can see it says that they have same values. So that's how you can compare your objects in uh, OOPS using Python.